Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as you can see, I'm at a very funny angle today. Um, and that's because uh, I'm going to be doing the live stream about how to write a symphony, but I'm actually going to show you the whole process. And in order to do that, I get the camera way up above me to focus in on what I'm going to use today is poster board. Though typically, I would not use something this big. Uh, I'm doing this just so you can see. Um, hopefully, um, everything on this goes well. I've got a uh, whole bunch of different things set up here. And I'm basically trapped uh, in um, this. Um, let's see. So, hello, um, then, and I, again, I can't, I can't pronounce your name, A-E. Um, so what I'm going to be doing today is basically doing a, a live stream on, uh, how I go about planning, um, a symphony. And in this case, this is going to be the actual planning I do for Movement 2 of Symphony 4. So Movements 1 three, four, and five are complete and they're ready to go. Movement two, uh, I have been thinking about, but I uh, have not begun um, writing yet. I have sketched a little bit, but I'm not happy with any of the sketches I've done. So I'm starting completely from scratch. Um, I will do my best to answer any questions you have. Um, I've got my uh, tablet set up here. Um, there's absolutely no way I could have uh, the computer where I could see it. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this and I will show you my process. Um, and process begins with a line. And I know that at some point this movement needs to begin. And I know that the movement needs to end. And so I represent everything with that on a line. Now, I also know essentially how I want the, symph the, the movement to begin. And I'll do some switching of colors. And I'm betting that um, the orange won't show up is too different from the brown. So I know that I want it to start out very soft. And to represent that, I um, have um, a line close to my original line. I know at some point I need it to grow. And so to do that, I will do basically line graphs. And I want to decide right now, do I want to end it big or do I want to end it small? I ended the last movement uh, big. The movement that follows ends small. The movement that after ends big. The, the final movement ends small. This movement needs to, I think, reflect um, the final movement because a lot of the material in this movement is going to come back in the final movement. So I want over here to end small as well. So what's going to go in the middle? Well, I need to know where am I going to get big? Do I want one climax or I want two climaxes? And that is a good question. So, um, I can work with something like that. I've got a big climax here. I've got another one here. I've got a quiet section here in the middle, quiet at the end, quiet at the beginning. And I think this is going to be a, a slow movement. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put down a metronome marking roughly of quarter note equals 66. That should be okay. Um, uh, 
And so this tells me the shape of what I want. No notes here, no nothing, uh, just uh, shapes. And I, this is a very visual thing. So I know that I want to grow, then shrink, then grow, then shrink. Ah, coffee. Okay. Um, so I want to, then I want to think about textures and instruments I'm going to use. And I kind of have this planned out. So in this movement, I want to have our piccolo player equals the alto flute. That uh, I don't want piccolo in this movement at all. I want that one player to move to alto flute. I want oboe two to alto oboe. English horn. And I want uh, trumpets one to three to flugelhorns. One to three. Now I want to know what kind, so this tells me right off the bat that I'm dealing with more mellow timbers in this movement. And so let me go ahead and see if I can explain uh, the idea here is forest sounds. And the, the idea of music from the forest for me has just kind of always been one of the, the key ingredients of my writing. Uh, I, I, I am very much a composer inspired by nature. And so, um, I, there will be elements of bird call. So let's bird call, um, natural sounds. So that could be wind, uh, rain, uh, storm, leaves. Um, and, uh, you know, all, all sorts of stuff that could fall into that. Um, some other things, it's got to be melodic. Do I want to actually look at folk elements? Or do I want to leave that element out? So I'll put a question mark there. And the other thing is, is this a happy or a sad forest? The feeling of the forest. And anymore, I find that whereas you've had in the past forest feeling scary so you've got a dark forest that would be appropriate for a fairy tale uh, you've got a happy forest you know happy little trees or anymore I, I I tend to think forests as being kind of sad places because they are disappearing and the the environmentalist in me uh, you know thinks well what 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 am i doing and so i need to also be introspective in this so if i am introspective i'm thinking from the point of view here that i really want this to be uh sad and and, and maybe th this is where a folk song element can come through. So I think back to Mauer 1 in this case and the, the fantastic third movement. Where we have so much folk elements coming in and it's just uh, peasants living in the forest. Well, maybe we have some kind of that, uh, some of that element, but it's not... Uh, happy anymore it's destructive so that 
now that I'm thinking this out loud, um, this section here needs to be dissonant. Um, I want to think about destruction of the forest. And then we fade out. And I think that works. Whereas over here, this climax needs to be the, the glory of the forest. And I want to thank Awake, Rest, Death. And I think we, if we have that kind of thing, we have a progression here uh, from beginning, awakening. And the, very much, if you listen to the first move, there is that sense of awakening in the beginning. Uh, but it, the first movement is much more humanistic in nature. So this is going to be much more naturalistic in nature. So we awake and we see the force in its full glory here. Um, lush harmonies and then we rest and we see kind of what we had at the beginning and then here we bring in drums and harsh sounds and then we fade away to the death of the forest which is going to be reflected in the final movement which is the epilogue and so what I'm going to want to do here is bring in the melody from the epilogue. If I could spell it right. So that's what I want here. And that way I have a cohesive element from um, a, a further movement. So this is just all me uh, planning here. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. So um, in the next step, what I want to do is I'm going to create a second line. And in this line, I want to have um, instruments that are going to play a, an important part. In the beginning, I want alto flute. Well, let's use a different color. Uh, yeah. You know what? That's not even going to show up on there. Let's go alto flute. Yeah. Uh, the next instrument I really want to hear is bass clarinet. Maybe in unison with the uh, alto oboe. Uh, that's uh, actually one of the, my favorite instrument combinations is unison or octaves between bass, clarinet, and uh, English horn. And it's just absolutely fantastic, uh, the pairing of the two. So we have that, and that moves to there. Let's go here to the next spot. Um, I want a solo B-flat clarinet. I really have not used that sound at all much in the, the symphony as is. So I think that will be quite lovely. Uh, and if we have Death of the Forest um, here, what instrument could represent that? Um, I think it's got to end on a solo bassoon, doesn't it? There's no more uh, appropriate instrument to represent uh, the sound of a tree than the bassoon. So that gets me quite a bit here. Um, 
I want to have a lot of um, flugels in here. And horns. Here I want more trombones and saxes. So the forest ends with a bundle of sticks. Correct. Yes. Um, and I, I find that, that to be quite quite appropriate there. So, um, yeah, I think this is a, a good place to start. Um, now, so the next, so this is kind of an instrumental uh, plan, what sounds you're going to hear. Uh, I want to have secondary instruments through here. Um, and to that effect, uh, we'll switch colors. What is a secondary instrument to a solo B-flat clarinet? Solo oboe. That color's not going to show up too well. So. Solo oboe there. Counterpoint. Um... What would be a good counter uh, against bass clarinet uh, and English horn? You know, a solo flugel there would be very nice. It will be a, a very new sound. Um, and, and, and so the, those are going to be kind of counterpoint things. And then let's move on to underlying texture. Uh, so I'll do that in a different color still. This needs, the only thing really here to, un oh, I just thought of something that will work. Yeah, that, everything I do has a counterpoint basis in it. So, I mean, you, you look at pretty much everything I've written, there's, I'm always thinking about the counterpoint involved. Uh, so before here, I want to put in a sax corral. Um, and that's going to actually be a, a premonition of movement five. So I want to have the elements here uh, from movement five start appearing in movement two. So foreshadowing. This is where um, my time being an English teacher comes into play in that uh, I'm thinking about uh, plot devices in this case that I want the, the sounds that will appear at the very end to have a basis closer to the beginning. So I've got um, the melody that I use in the epilogue starting here, and then right after that, a chorale I use in the epilogue starting here as well. Uh, they will be revoiced and reharmonized, but it'll work, and then we end with that lovely solo bassoon. Um, in some of these cases, um, you know, underneath uh, the solo B flat clarinet and the solo oboe, um, I, what kind of texture do I want? And what what immediately is coming to mind is harp like. The thing is, I don't have any harps in this ensemble, which means I could use uh, marimba vibes. I think those two will make quite nice choices. And then uh, low clarinets. And that mixture there will be very woody, 
but it'll also be very delicate and I think that works quite well there. Um, so this will really end up being a tootie, as will this. And I, I, I do want clarinet murmurs here at the beginning. And that will continue through that. Um, that gives me a really nice um, overall uh, orchestration plan. So I've sketched out the form. I've sketched out um, it, it, the plot line, basically. I've sketched out some melodic ideas, and I've sketched out basic orchestration. And I have not written down a single note. This looks more like a chart you would do for English class or science class. But this is a, a, how I start a lot of pieces. It's, um, I, I, I find it kind of a fascinating way to do things. Um, it means I'm always, I'm always thinking about the overall picture. And even when I'm not doing a graph or a chart like this, I um, I have that idea in my head. Um, but let me know what you guys uh, think. I know there's about four of you in here watching right now. Uh, I know I did this kind of at a weird time. Um, but my next step on this is going to be to go and um, go to basically paper and... Well, I don't know if I'm even going to go to paper because I think I may go directly into the computer. Um, but yeah, let me uh, feel free to ask any questions right now. I'm I'm going to kind of sit here and look at this for a few minutes, um, and lump and just kind of mull it over. Uh. I'm having some trouble starting a big piece I want to write. I should try this. Um, yes, uh, so this is this is one of those cases. Uh, oftentimes you need to know where you're going in order to get there. And so I know where I'm going. I want to get here. Um, I want to know what's the quickest route. I need to know my roadmap. Now, I can take any kind of side branch I want in this kind of roadmap, but I know I want to start small. I want to end small. I want to get big about a third of the way in. I want to get big again two thirds of the way in. I want to have a quiet middle at the halfway point. That's so simple structurally, yet it, it will work very well, and it's something that the listener can hold on to. So the whole time I need to be thinking, how is the listener going to interpret this? Is it going to make sense? And for a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, you need to be thinking much more simply uh, than you probably realize. It's like okay, this is this is so simplistic right here. Small, big, small, big, small. Boom, done. End of the piece. This is probably going to be about six, seven minutes of music. You know, if I'm thinking at 66 the whole way, and I would probably be looking about 100 measures. And if I'm at 4-4, we'll round that down to 60. And if we're at 4-4, 60 times, uh, well, 1 times 4 is 4 uh, times 100. So it's 400 seconds. That's uh, 6 minutes and 40 seconds at 100 uh, beats a minute or at 60 beats a minute for 100 measures. That'd be about right. 
and put this at about 30 measures in, this about 60 measures in, this 50 measures in, and then I know, so let's just put those numbers there. If I do this as one, this is 100, this would be about 30, this would be about 60, this would be about 50, actually this should be about 70, shouldn't it? So that gives me uh, some points here, some numbers. Numbers help uh, define things. So I know that I've got 30 bars to get from 1 to 30, 20 bars from 30 to 50, uh, 20 more bars from 50 to 70, 30 bars to the end. Where I would cut stuff out would probably be right here at the end. Uh, you always... Once you've said it, you don't need to say it again at full length. You can always truncate and truncate more toward the end of things than at the beginning. Uh, sometimes there, there are exceptions to that, of course. Uh, but yeah, so this is, this is how I plan out um, a, a symphony. Uh, I, so I will tell you something right now uh, came up this morning. Um, there is not going to be a uh, band nerd hangout tomorrow night like I had planned. Um, maybe I'll do one tonight, uh, but uh, tomorrow um, I got a message early this morning for, from one uh, Richard Bobo, and he's driving through town, um, and we're going to do a road trip tomorrow. And, uh, just surprise, surprise. So Richard and I are going to be doing a, a road trip all day tomorrow to go pick up an instrument. And um, yeah, I'm probably going to vlog the whole thing, which should be fun. I mean, it's going to be in the car like nine hours together. Um, can you imagine the kind of brainstorming and shenanigans Richard and I will get up to tomorrow? Um that I, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Um, we, we're going to go pick up an instrument together. I won't say too much more on that, but uh, yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end this now. This is basically just the, the bare bones planning. So um, I may do... Now, we're going to skip this week's um, Band Nerd Hangout, and we'll just do trombones next week. All right, guys, I will talk to you later.